occasion in my life, I reached in my pocket and uh, brought out a, a bill. It was mine. It's mine. Than, huh? I lost one. More than 20? Maybe this is yours. <laughs> and so I reached in my pocket and brought this up. Somebody want this? Yeah. All you got to do is come up and get it. If I do, I'm no. going to the church, Mike. Absolutely not. Well, you just turned down a million dollars. Oh, man. No, I don't see that happening. <laughs> well, that's what it is. It's a million dollars. I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. Uh, very nice. Beautiful. I say this to remind you that we're still trying to be uh, in line with what's happening. They're talking about shutting the churches down again. Uh, if we do, we'll probably have them over at my house. Uh, we'll have the service at our house. I've got all my wife's uh, bookkeeping and put it in the back room so we can get at least 15 people in there. So, uh, One of the things I'd like you to do, and I'll try to give you something, is get. A, I'd like the list of the phone numbers because my wife has them on her phone, but I have only about four or five of your numbers on mine. Saying that, uh, my wife went to the chiropractor this last week, and she's doing much better. Thank you. Um, she can get around without so much pain. But today we start uh, what we call the Advent season. Now, probably my wife has done this before. Have you know, noticed down below you is a candelabra, and uh, I couldn't find the. Uh, rest of the candles because she said there were any, but uh, I have to get down on my knees to look on the bottom shelf to find them. And if I got down on my knees, I might not be able to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, the Advent season is a time in which most of Christendom uh, celebrates and uh, it's the advent of Jesus Christ, or the time that Jesus Christ came to earth the first time as a babe in the manger in Bethlehem. The second advent is later on, about four months further down the road in the new year, but thought it might be good to uh, give you a little history of it, so make sure I didn't uh, go too far out. Uh, the candles of the advent are symbolic of hope and joy and love and peace. The fourth candle is sometimes spoken of as purity. The fifth candle is, which is supposed to be on the fifth Sunday, will be on the 27th of December this year. It speaks of Christ and it is white. It's a time of preparation. The first candle, of course, is hope and we'll talk about that today. Uh, the pink candle speaks of Joy, and that's on the third Sunday. The three purple ones, uh, one pink and one white, uh, speak of uh, love, joy, and, uh, or love, joy, and I forget which one. Peace, I think. I hope, love, and peace, okay. The uh, fourth Sunday, or the fifth Sunday this year, will be uh, on the 27th speaks of Christ himself. Uh, this has not been done for all of the times since Christ uh, has left 2,000 years ago. Uh, I thought it was interesting as I was looking it up because I had never thought about it, but Mary was the mother of Jesus. Does anybody know who the Mary, uh, mother of Mary was? Huh? Well, supposedly, and I'm going to have to look it up again, but according to Google, it says Anne, St. Anne, was the mother of Jesus. And I did not know that. I also uh, found this out that I thought was interesting. Uh, some uh, parts of the church uh, deny this, but James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon were named as brothers, and you can find that in Mark 6, 3. Matthew 13, 55 to 56. And uh, he, also, she, uh, he also had sisters. The amazing thing, uh, the birth of Christ is uh, said on December the 25th. 
It coincides with the pagan holiday uh, of Saturn, which was the Roman god of agriculture. Uh, but it didn't start being celebrated until 336 AD, 330 years or 300 years after Christ. And it wasn't celebrated as a federal holiday in America until 1870. The uh, Christian historian Sectus Julius Africanus dated uh, March the 26th as the date of the conception of the Christ child. Therefore, uh, December the 25th had to be the time of the birth because that was nine months later. But he also cre uh, dated the creation of the world on uh, December the 25th saying that um, it's amazing. Thank you, Bob, Robert. Uh, Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. It's amazing in this time in which we live in how much tradition has to do with how we worship. Most of us uh, recognize that uh, during the first 300 and some odd years of the church, it was called the primitive church. Uh, they met in homes, they met in uh, caves, they met under trees, they met beside the river. Uh, most of them were not allowed to uh, meet in the uh, Jewish synagogues because they didn't practice the same kind of faith that the Jewish people practiced. Saying all that, um, just for a couple of seconds as we begin our message this morning, uh, I'd like to take you back to the time of the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, I looked these things up. Uh, you, you remember things partly in history, but uh, we also often forget. Remember, uh, the second temple was still standing uh, in 35 years. 36 years, depends on how you date it. Uh, general Titus, the Roman general, would surround Jerusalem and uh, basically haze, tear down everything where that it was a level field. And to this date, they're not completely sure where the original temple was, even though they say the Dome of Osk, Osk O Mosk, I can't pronounce it right, is the place where the second temple is, or the third temple is supposed to be rebuilt. Saying all that, uh, if you were to be living in the times of Jesus Christ, the Great Pyramid of Giza was 2,500 years old at that time. Wow. The library at Alexander was still open. You could go and read if you were a scholar. Uh, the Colosseums in Rome had not yet been built. Uh, the Mediterranean sea, sea was still the focal point of what we call Western civilization. Uh, I used to know a little bit about Western civilization because I took a course in college on it. And I didn't know then that they also have a, another course called Eastern civilization. Right. Eastern civilization, of course, is primarily India and China, uh, China and the eastern part of the world. Nevertheless, uh, Strabo the historian uh, did not include China in uh, the census that was taken during that time. And he said that there was 57.5 uh, million people in the what we call the Roman world. There were uh, approximately 45 million people that lived elsewhere. But the world they, they knew was the world surrounding what we call the Mediterranean Sea. That was their focus of what they knew and where they went and what they did, even though the unknown world was marked on their uh, maps that they had. Uh, they didn't have what we would understand ways of communication except by runners, by ship, uh, and oftentimes 
by the time that you hurt something, it was several years later. How would you like to live in that world? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> we instantly hear what's happening at rest, around the rest of the world. Uh, just for um, your information, and most of you know it, in Galatians 4.4, 4, it says, in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ was brought into this world to become the savior of the world. But uh, what language did they speak? And again, sometimes we think, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, but according to most historians, the language that Jesus spoke was Aramaic. Yep. Even though uh, he probably spoke some Hebrew because Hebrew was the language that scholars spoke and used. But at that time, particular time also, the everyday language of the known world was Latin and Greek. That was the common man's language. Now that you're caught up with that, uh, you can turn your page over if you'd like to follow me. Uh, hope, Jesus comes to save us. Aren't you glad that he came to save us? Amen. Um, the remarkable thing, when we talk about hope, they lived in a similar world when Jesus came into this world. Up to four-fifths of the world at that particular time was in some kind of slavery. They either owed for a debt and they were paying it off by working for somebody. There was what we call the elitist group. Guess what? We are being controlled to a certain extent by elitism today in the world. I don't like to talk about conspiracy, but evidently there is conspiracies that are in the world. Uh, don't get carried away, but our scripture reading to start off is, and I like that uh, because I don't have to look down, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall I see be. This is speaking of Abraham, the father of faith. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when it was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake, alone that it was also imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Aren't you glad that he raised up Jesus Christ from the dead? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You think about the time in which Christ lived, the fullness of time, the Roman roads went out, throughout the Roman provinces. They were still in existence today. Foundation is much better than some of the roads that we have in America. They had Roman cities and the Roman rule was quite complete. They had Roman water systems that are still working. Uh, it was really ideal to have lived in such squalor, going from such squalor to such splendor. And of course, the, the one thing that kept control over everything was the Roman army. And if there was taxation, which there was in the time of the birth of Jesus Christ, he was at the order of the emperor. But most of you will never remember that Claudius was the emperor at that time, but you'll always remember that Jesus Christ came as a babe in the, babe in the manger in Bethlehem. Saying all that, um, in Hebrews 11.1, we find this as another scripture talking about uh, hope. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, wow. how many of you got hopes and dreams and desires? Basically, that's what the meaning of uh, hope is. It's an expectation, a desire, uh, something to put our faith in, to something that we want to happen. But I always like to read, as we start the Christmas program, over in the book of Luke, one of the things that I read to my family every Christmas Eve, down to the years, the 
while they were at home and when they would come back home Christmas time, which was great, I would read it again. And they were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior. Let me just say, not just a Savior, but the only Savior. Amen. Only one name under heaven whereby man may be saved, the name Jesus Christ, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Father, we ask you to bless your word today. Bless your people as perhaps we might rediscover that you had a plan from the beginning of time even to this time and that we're part of that plan. And Lord, even though we live in troublesome times, we know that you're the God of all hope and no one else can take away our fears and our problems in our situations like you can, Jesus. We ask your blessing on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. Think about a little maid, a little girl. Some believe that she was only 14 years old. Uh, it was not implausible to think that that could have happened most believe that she was 16 to 18. And uh, she was espoused to Joseph, who was probably 30 or more. But that was the way it was. It was arranged marriage. But God had another plan. And uh, he spoke to Mary. And Mary consented. And, of course, this is the faith that we... Uh, must have in similar ways, be it unto me as you want, Father. Uh, a lot of people do not believe in the virgin birth, but that's the cornerstone of our faith. We believe that the impossible became impossible so that the seed of God could come back into the world so that the seed of man who was fallen could find salvation through the one that was a perfect sin offering on the cross of Calvary. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Amen. And of course, as Robert uh, read, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Uh, let me just stay, say thank you, uh, Georgia, for all the great work that she did. And I can see those things. Uh, we need to give her a praise offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much. Uh, she spent a lot of time on it and a lot of money. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's not easily, not easily done. Amen. Praise God. Uh, most of the time, anything that you do for the Lord is not easily done. Yes. Pastor, I just wanted to say while you're saying thank you, we need to say thank you to John Steffi. He's the one that supplied with us with the new computer, new keyboard, and mouse. Amen. We picked it up in Las Vegas. He's one of our IT guys. If you could us an address, we'll... Uh, I, I've got the address and everything for you, but I just wanted to say, amen. everybody hold him and his family up because his wife is ill. Amen. And so he had, he was going to be here, but he has been battling her sickness amen. with all these doctors and tests and everything, so he didn't get to make it. So he he's been uh, collaborating with Georgia to get all this set up. But mostly it's all George's knowledge that did all this. Well, wow. amen. But I just want to say thank you to John Steffi because he loves our little church. Amen. That's, and that's, our little town. Amen. amen. That's he, the first time I've heard the name. Through many times amen. of uh, equipment. It's people like that that, uh, yeah. that build the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he, well, Pastor, he went, to the, he went to one of the dealers there in Vegas and got our equipment donated. It's brand new. Well, praise so the that, Lord. That, that, that's... 
it's that's going some because he you know he went under the under the line and Amen. got these got these big companies to think of our little church and I thank Amen. God for it because Amen. He knows God knows that we're here. Amen. Because sometimes we wonder where all this stuff comes from, especially in small churches with small right. beginnings. But it's people like that that go beyond. That's right. Uh, that do that and make sure we have that name uh, right. so we can send I that back it, to. I thought I'm going to give it to Georgia, and I thought maybe we could. Um, I'm going to make up a, a nice little, you know, like a, a, a some kind of not a plaque, but something nice that we can send. Thank to. you very much. And then we, I thought maybe everybody might want to sign it to say thank you. Amen. Okay. On the next couple of weeks, I'll work on that. Okay. I appreciate okay. it very much. And thank thank you. you. Amen. It's uh, people that do the little things uh, there's an old saying that uh, there's yet to be a person that uh, uh, God can find that uh, will do everything they can for the glory of God and I'm sure that he did this for that and I know that Georgia does this uh, because most of us uh, we like to hide behind us we'd like somebody else to say well I'm glad it's done but uh, I'd like to give all the glory to the Lord amen that's the way we all are so these are the people that believe in the God of all hope. And as you follow with me this morning in our message, on this first Sunday of Advent, uh, He is our hope, Colossians 1.27, uh, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentile, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, you can just expound on that one scripture, talk about how rich God is and how rich uh, we are, but the main thing that uh, I'd like to leave you with is that Christ is inside of you. Uh, if the same Spirit that raised up Christ in the, from the dead dwell in you, He shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Now, he's not way out there somewhere. He's right here. Praise. Right here inside of us. That's the God of all hope. And uh, let's face it, even as Christians, we come into what we call hopeless situations. Don't know how we're going to turn around or what we're going to do. And uh, uh seem like that they come in bundles, not just one at a time. <laughs> and when we think that we uh, got to grasp on things, but in the midst of all the trouble and the problems that we have, God is still the God of all hope. And uh, I look at Steve back there, we're on Facebook, and uh, we're believing that the God of all hope is going to make sure that we have a second term president. Amen. <laughs> we believe in God. I believe it's going to happen. Praise God. Amen. we got to stand up. We've got to pull together. We're, Amen. We're God, and he's going Amen. to take care of us. We, we hold on. Yes. Against Jesus. hope, we believe in hope. And all the uh, modern critics and uh, media and all those people have said, no way. Well, guess what? Nothing shall be impossible with the God, and I, we're going to see it happen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But let me just not stop there. Christ is our living hope. 1 Peter 1 3. Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. There he goes. Uh, Praise God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now let me tell you again something about history that uh, every church father and every pronosticator of the gospel will tell you this, that the reason the church turned the world upside down in the first 300 years without media without transportation or with anything, without anything, is because they believed in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they didn't know until Jesus Christ was the first that came back from the dead. And they were not afraid to sacrifice their lives because they said, well, this is just a, a real quick trip to glory. And may I just add, uh, it wasn't really the best of times, even though it was a good time to live that was much better than most of the world up until that time had because uh, you were somebody's slave. Uh, you had to listen and do whatever they told you to do. In the world we live right now where we can't even get our kids to listen to us, 
guess what? <laughs> Maybe it would be good uh, if we went back to that time because the one thing that you could understand that was authority really worked. Absolutely. And you could live your life or lose your life depending on whether or not you obeyed the commands of the people that were in charge. But the main thing, he's alive. He's not a dead Christ. No. Uh, we often condemn people that have a cross and they have the Christ on the cross. Uh, they don't mean it that way, most of them. But I'm glad that Christ is not on the cross anymore. I'm glad that he arose from the dead and that he's alive, not just then, but forevermore. And we sing that song, because he lives, we shall live also. Yes. Uh, and let me just say this, because so often we just stop right there. We're thinking about the afterlife. Let me tell you that one of the great scriptures that we often overlook is found in John 10.10. 10. He says, I am come that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. I believe that if you're not living the abundant life as a Christian, you're falling far short, short of what God wants you to have. Enjoy the moment. You know, I couldn't help but think this morning, uh, I've been keeping my thermostat down below 55 so I won't run the furnace and everything. But when I get up, I thought, you know, this is Sunday morning, I'm gonna turn the heat on. <laughs> and uh, I thought, I went in there and I took a hot shower. And, and then I put my stuff in the microwave and I had hot coffee and uh, I had that stuff that uh, I got yesterday that makes my coffee even better. Ooh. And I thought, <laughs> There are millions of people in the United States that are not living half as well as I am. Praise God. Praise and God. there was a report that uh, one-fifth or one-sixth of the United States people that are renters and don't own their house are about to have to leave because they can't make the payments. And I mentioned earlier about how that those people that are living underneath the uh, railroad and the uh, highway bridges. Yes. Uh, those, the people that are homeless, aren't you glad you got a home? Praise God. Uh, Praise I know this is probably not timely, but when I was a little boy, uh, uh, just looking for a home, the old Bill Bo Weevil, anybody remember that? Uh, there's only been a one or two times that I didn't have a place to go when I wanted to lay my head down. And I guarantee you, you feel really isolated. You feel like that you don't know what life is all about where you don't have any place to go. Aren't you glad you have some place to go tonight? But he is not just a living hope. He's a blessed hope. Titus 2.13. Uh, sounds like that I'm repeating myself, but I just want to bring to your attention something that's really great as we remember the Christmas season, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what we call the first advent, what we're talking about today, but that's talking about the second advent. Uh, a lot of people do not believe that Jesus Christ is going to come. Uh, they believe that the world is going to get better and better and we're just going to get it more perfect and more perfect, and then God's gonna just come down and say, okay, you did a pretty good job. But aren't you glad that the blessed hope is coming? I don't have much faith in the world system. Uh, America is probably, if you don't mind me saying so, the still the greatest hope that there is in the world today. Amen. I believe because we've had a, a people that based their belief on the Constitution and upon capitalism and upon Christianity that we are still the greatest nation in the world because of God's grace. You don't have to say amen to that, but um, I, I thank God that, that it's, it's true. And uh, I can't help but say that it's hard not to be a patriot if you live in the United States. And I don't like to get political, but 
thank God for the good old USA. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't trust in the, in the government, but I trust in the Lord that founded the government and blessed the United States. And when you talk about future blessings, a lot of people say, well, the blessed hope. How many feel like you're blessed today? Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm so blessed that I come in and I go out. Yeah, there's a lot of things in my life that are not like I want it to be, but it's so much better than it used to be. Um, I, uh, I kept thinking about this. Have you ever looked for money? Um, I've been cleaning my wife's. I take her, all her stuff out of our front room uh, there in the trailer, and I put it in the back room. I made an office back there. And um, I know this is sound crazy. Uh, I haven't told her yet. But I started gathering up all the grain, grain, excuse me, all the coins, coins that she had, and also all the uh, little things of candy that she had, and the purses, that, well, all the junk that she had accumulated the past, last few years. And I found over $6.75 in change. Wow. And I put it in a pocket book, little pocket book, and I'm gonna tell her when she gets here, Guess what I found that belongs my mind? And she's going to say what? And I'm going to show her. I says, finders, keepers, losers, and weepers. Oh, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> oh, I get sweet, sweet. Pastor, we're going to come visit you in the hospital. I don't know. I wouldn't do that. So, are you, are you blessed today? <laughs> Amen. Uh, nevertheless, uh, she started telling me how to do it yesterday, and I says, well, I'm going to stop and let you come back and do it. And then she shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes this next scripture might not seem uh, very pointed, but 2 Thessalonians 2.16. Think about it as we read it. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your heart and establish you in every good word and work. I don't know if you remember this or not, but even when I was back in the first, second, and third grade, they used to let us pray. Uh, and one of the prayers that we prayed, God is good, God is great. And we would finish up the prayer. They won't let you even pray. Yeah. But aren't you glad that we have a good God? Uh, you think about it, uh, I've studied other gods, supposedly, and they're, they're not very good. Uh, it's hard to believe that people put their hope in angry gods, in gods that can't do anything. But we have a good God. And because we have a good God, He wants us to have a good life, and a good work, and a good word. But I won't just stop there. Uh, he's our better hope. Hebrews 7.19 For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did it, by the which we draw nigh to God. Inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. Now he's our high priest now. Now you think about it. Uh, I couldn't have when I was putting this down. Uh, He's not just a better hope, he's the best hope. He's, he's the better, best hope. Uh, in fact, I, I go back to what I started with, he's the only hope. <laughs> uh, Acts 4.12 says that is no other name under heaven whereby man may say, but the name in the man Jesus Christ. Uh, he's the only hope. I used to sing a song, without hope walk the shell of a man. Uh, I don't know what I would do without my hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I put my faith and hope in Jesus when I was 14 years old and all my life, uh, in every place, in every opportunity that I had, I shared my hope and I trusted in my hope. Uh, can, I, can I just brag a little bit on the Lord? Yes. Uh, I had a scholarship to play football and it was way over my head because uh, four of the people I played with wound up playing in the National Football League and in the American Football League. They were so much better than I was, but I was able to be on the same field with them. But let me tell you the secret of me being able to be there. 
because I asked the Lord to be my help. And I prayed before I went to practice, and after I got to practice, and I prayed in, prayed in the games, and I prayed all the time. Uh, I've been in courtrooms where they've asked me to give testimony, and I have no idea what to say because my intellect, intellectual capacity is only is limited, uh, even on my best days. Anybody say amen to that? Amen. Uh, you don't have to share it about me, but about yourself, you know. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, God gives us a word in due season. He, he's part 46 chapter of Psalms, the first verse is a very present help in time of need. Amen. Uh, a few year, years ago, maybe a year and a half a year ago, uh, El took me up on his tower and he says, I didn't know how to make the uh, steps. He says, I just did it. He says, God showed me. Aren't you glad God shows us how to do the little things in life? Uh, sometimes we, we wonder how we get through life. Well, the only way I can get through life is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not only a, the better hope, he's the best hope. And in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the 19th verse, and we close with this, he is a God of steadfast and hope, sure and steadfast hope, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us, entered even Jesus, making a high priest forever after the honor of Melchizedek. On that same area, he talks about he ever lived to make intercession for us. But think about it, sure and steadfast. There's not very many things in life that are sure and steadfast. Uh, can, I, can I begin to close by saying you can count on him? Amen. You can count on him. Uh, here a while back, uh, I was in a place where things weren't going too good. Uh, uh, I don't try to acknowledge when things are not going too good. <laughs> but you ever been without money? Uh, uh, when the doctor came and said that if, you don't, if we don't operate, you're not going to make it much longer. Uh, uh, again, I'm not bragging on Rudy, but I've had... Uh, prostate cancer, I've had two heart, major heart surgeries, I've had major back surgeries, I've had 27 eye surgeries, I've had five different minor surgeries, what? I've had 17 kidney stones and two gallstones. Can I go on or would you like me to shut up? <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Every time they tell you that when you get under the ether that you don't have really a promise that you're going to have to come out. But I'm still alive. Amen. And I put my hope in Him. And I remember the first time 33 years ago that I ever remember going under the gas. And I might have told this story before, but it bears repeating. Uh, I don't remember going out, but I remember laying there and hearing somebody say, Mr. Reimer, Mr. Reimer. And I'm sure I must be dead because the only Mr. Rammer I knew was my father. <laughs> and my heart skipped him a, a jump or two because I figured that I was be dead. I says, oh well, I put my trust in the Lord. <laughs> Come to find out they were just trying to get me to wake up. <laughs> Sometimes I think God is trying to get us all to wake up. <laughs> but God is a good God. Uh, in Zechariah 9:12, and I identify with this so t listen turn you to the stronghold you prisoners of hope even today do I can declare that I will render double unto you I'm going to go ahead and just stop there but the stronghold aren't you glad you got a stronghold and let me say this he's got a stronghold of you. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to leave you. He says, I'll never leave you. He says, I'm going to be with you until the end of time. Mm -hmm. And when the end of time comes, we're going to be with him, and there's going to be any time any longer. Can you, can you digest that part? Mm -hmm. But guess what? God is the God of all hope. <laughs> May he fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound 
in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God of all hope, I'm glad I put my hope in the Lord today. Praise. And as we go through this Advent season of remembering a little baby that came as a babe in Bethlehem, who would have thought a little girl in God and be ostracized because she did, but trusted God anyway, and because of her, she was able to bring in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our only hope. As we close this morning, we think about that scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, 7, which, because I believe in Jesus Christ, I hope in all things that pertain to God. Aren't you glad that your hope is in Jesus Christ this morning? My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. The God of all hope. That's who we are believing in this morning. And let me just say this in my closing statement. I don't know what's going to happen to the rest of the world. Dire predictions, dire circumstances, but guess what? I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him in Jesus' name. Father, bless your word and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Aren't you glad for Jesus this morning? If any of you need prayer or whatever,